Hi third graders, welcome back to our reading workshop lesson. Hope you're doing great. Today we are on our 13th lesson for our nonfiction reading. So let's get started. Readers, I've noticed that sometimes and many times, to be honest, uh, when we're reading, we just tend to just peruse and go quickly right past the pictures. Whether we're reading um, just fun picture books or when we're in in deep into our um, informational or nonfiction reading, we sometimes just peruse right past them. <clears throat> and what we need to remember as a reader, a lot of times we can find even more information by studying these pictures. We can build on what we've been reading about and learning about, and we could even come up with a few questions too, some wonderings about what's taking place in that picture that might then allow us to then study a little bit more or deeper in our nonfiction type of reading. So it's important that we um, take the time to carefully study our, um, our pictures that we're seeing in our informational text. So that is what our main focus of our lesson is today. So it says on here, we're going to study the pictures carefully to help us think about the information that we're reading and to grow on our ideas. And by doing that, when we look at the pictures, you'll see the little prompts at the bottom. We'll be using words like, I notice, or I wonder, or finally, you might be using the word or the phrase, I should say, I think. So we're going to try that today. So um, to remind you, we are reading from our Penguins book. And I came to another section, um, which we kind of glanced at a little bit. It was Penguins Homes. And I'm going to take the time now to study these pictures a little bit more, okay? And I'm going to be using the phrase, I notice, I wonder, and I think, okay? And that's something that you'll be trying out too. As I look at these pictures, this one in particular, I notice that the penguins are surrounded and living in like an icy snow area, and I also notice that there are um, baby type penguins and the adult. And I know that by looking at their type of feathers. But my big taking away from this is that I notice about their home. And I notice that it's a very, obviously a cold, cool area because of the snow. When I look at this picture of their home, this is making me say, I wonder. And what I wonder is, can penguins live in an environment that's not always covered with snow or ice? Because in this picture, I actually see grassland and I see flowing water. So that's something that I'm wondering, do they have to always live in an environment that is very cold and chilly with snow and ice? Because that's what I noticed in this picture. So this picture makes me wonder, do they have to have that type of environment? So I think taking from these two pictures, my next prompt would be, I think, and I think that penguins could live in these different environments and, um, and have a, you know, they could live in a cool and um, cold environment or, oopsie, or an environment like this. So... If I were to dig in a little deeper and now read this information, I would then later read and find out on here that it said that some penguins do live in a cool place where trees and plants can grow. Hmm. So it means it's cool weather. It's not freezing cold, right? Other um, things can grow there. But then it also says that some penguins, um, they live in... Uh, cold, harsh environments. Some penguins live in warm, dry areas. So it, it looks like that they do live in all types of areas. So that's what you're going to try and do today. You're going to take your informational book and you're going to study the actual pictures and you're going to come up with some, uh, I notice some noticings, some wonderings, and also some thinks. All right. So I do have your student chart available on our learning document, which will take you through the steps of what Mrs. Talon just did. And it says, I can study the pictures carefully to grow ideas in this way. And the first thing you can do is to refer to a picture in the text that you're reading that makes you think and it makes you wonder. 
and say those out loud. Or Regis, you know what you might do? You might even list those maybe on a sticky note because we use sticky notes a lot in school. But if you don't have that, you don't have to use it. You see that I didn't use it. I just was using my fingers and using the books to point. And then it says, use these uh, conversation type prompts when saying them out loud. So you would say, I notice, I wonder, I think. And then if you have someone at home that um, this bottom one, this says, listen to the ideas with others and share them. So if we were in school, we would be in partnerships where we would partner up with someone and they would have an informational book and you would, and you would exchange your noticing and wonderings. So if you have someone at home or a sibling that you could do that with, that would be great. All right, so that is basically it for today's lesson. Taking um, your informational books, digging a little deeper in your pictures, seeing some things maybe in the backgrounds that maybe you didn't notice because usually you just flip so fast through the book because I know I've done that before. So um, we want to just take the time to grow on our ideas that we're reading and really enjoy the pictures that the author um, has chosen to put in your book. All right, third graders, I hope you have a wonderful day. Try to take some time to read uh, today, you know, 20 to 30 minutes and explore. And I will see you again tomorrow. All right, take care.